Yo, what's up, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another review. This is All American Homecoming Season 2, Episode 19. I was about to say Episode 19, Episode 9, entitled Hard Place. And maybe that was just my brain doing its own thing because uh, as I'm recording this, I do not think we have received the renewal for Season 3, so I'm going to need them to get on that. I saw that All American got renewed for Season 6, how? But I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. More power to them. I want everybody to keep their job. But I need for All-American Homecoming to get that renewal for season three. Because in my personal opinion, it has surpassed All-American. It's great writing, great acting, great chemistry amongst all the cast. And I'm, I'm going to just move on because that's not what this is about. So <laughs> welcome new family members and returning and this is a trailer, uh, excuse me, this is the um, review slash breakdown, like I said. And uh, I'm not going to touch on everything, but it's still going to give what it's supposed to give. So I'm going to get the sad part out the way first. My heart already broke when Damon called his father. And, you know, his father didn't even remember that he was in college because we know his dad is suffering from Alzheimer's and he just doesn't remember certain things. And I just couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine experiencing that with the parent. And for Damon to be in college his freshman year. And you know what hit me as I watched this with everything that was happening in this episode. I said, these are college freshmen. And it really took me back to the place as a college freshman. I turned 19 the second month of my, um, was that 19? Hell, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I turned 19. Yes, I turned 19 my second month being in school. And I'm like, they're so young. Like, they're so young to be experiencing the things that they are experiencing. But back to Damon, losing his dad and then to have, you know, um, Coach Marcus come in. And I'm glad that Coach Marcus was the person that came in and told him that and, you know, just held him. And it was a, almost everything that happened in this episode was very reminiscent to my college experience, whether it happened with me personally or... Or it happened to a close friend of mine. I didn't lose a parent in college. I lost uh, my paternal grandmother um, while I was a junior in college. And my mother had one of my closest friends to to come in and tell me. And, like, everything in this episode was very, like, emotional for me in a sense. I didn't cry. I ain't shed no tears. But it really got me uh, emotionally with some of the things that took place. So I just had to get that out of the way first because... That was a moment. I said, this poor baby done lost his daddy. I, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared, nor was I ready, nor was I expecting that to happen at the end of this episode. But the writing is just so good, and the writers definitely pull on the, the heartstrings of the audience. And so we find out, you know, we found out last week that Nate was going to be running for president of the student body. And, you know... <laughs> This scene was so funny between Nate and Simone when Nate showed Simone the poster, you know what I'm saying, that she's going to be using to promote the presidency or whatever. Simone was like, this is giving political Barbie. I don't know why that was so funny to me that I cracked up. I thought that was hilarious. And so we know that Simone is pledging and I said, wow, this was so interesting because I couldn't do it. It, I think it takes a special person to pledge and to cross. And even though a lot of things within these organizations are, you know, very secret, very sacred, I do appreciate the way that the writers touch on certain things without ruining the integrity of the sororities and fraternities, but still kind of exposing some of the things that happen. And I, I am not a part of a great organization. However, a particular sorority was on me hard when I stepped foot on campus. And I'm talking about hard. It was the organization's president that was really, I'm like, I, because first of all, there I don't have people in my family or my immediate family who are part of sorority. So it wasn't something that was talked about in my family. It wasn't something that I was expected to do. So I never had a desire. And maybe if I had a desire, I had an interest but I didn't have a desire. And maybe if my desire was heightened for it, maybe I would have went along with the process. But I just never saw myself going in that direction. And like I said, it, the you know, I was going to all of this particular organization's um, 
uh, activities and all of these things like that. And, you know, the president always found her way to me to talk to me. And, oh, you you little sis, whatever you want. I was like, get away from me because, you know, you're you're definitely sparking my interest. But I, I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And so we... <laughs> So we see that, you know, the young lady didn't know the proper Greek alphabet. And because of that, everybody got water, you know what I'm saying, poured on them or whatnot. And I'm like, this is why I couldn't do it. I, I don't know. And even now as, as a grown ass woman, I'm not built to do things that go against my moral compass. I, I, I can't, I can't do it. Um, the moment that Simone was placed in a situation where, you know, they had to support Nico and post Nico stuff around campus and she ended up throwing some of the stuff in the garbage, which I probably would have did the same thing. Um, you know, it, it caused it, it, it caused an issue when it came to her and her line sisters and them getting in trouble and things of that nature. And I think even though it was focused on the sorority aspect of it, I do like the fact that it was more honed in when it came to Simone and her relationship with women outside of her friend circle, because we know she had issues with the tennis team. So therefore she really didn't trust people like that. She kept the guard up and I like how they brought it together where, you know, we're your line sisters. We're here for you. We got you. We going to cover you. We didn't expose you. Even though we knew you were the one who did this, it's about sisterhood. It's about loyalty. And it's about us becoming a part of something bigger than ourselves. So I really did like that particular message that was exhibited as the show went on. Now to Lando. Uh, Lando and Simone scenes are just so yummy <laughs> that I absolutely love them. And the scene where he called her because he knows that she's pledging and you know, they can't have no no boy girl time. And um, so I thought it was a cute scene because he his sister played, so he knew how it worked and everything like that. And um uh, I like how he was messing with her in the beginning, like, you know, I'm feeling like you not trying to deal with me if it's like that. She was like, No, Lindo, I promise it's not like that. And I was like, Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I was like, This is so adorable. I I want I want them together. I want them to I want them to take their time. I do want them to take their time. But I absolutely love I just absolutely love their their moments together. I love how even though they have already had sex, I mean we in college, we, we know how this happens. We know we know what goes down. Even though they've already rushed to that aspect of their relationship, I really love to see like them just getting to know each other or expressing concern. And we saw that in last week's episode and even with this week's episode as well. And the scene where they were in the classroom and Simone was like, I already done broke a rule, breaking another one ain't going ain't gonna to hurt nobody. And I love the fact how Lando calls her out, but he does it in a very compassionate way where it doesn't come off like he's been an asshole, at least in my opinion. He tells her what she needs to know and bring things to her attention that she needs to take hold to. Um, and he just does, he just has a way of, of saying it that I think, it causes her to be receptive of it. And I think that that is a, a beautiful thing. And then when he put the little care package, let me not say little, cause I don't want to minimize that. When he put that care package in front of her door and gave her like that encouraging note, you know, like these are snacks and stuff to keep you healthy. You know, you got this. I'm like, Oh my God. See, men are so sweet at this age. Cause you know, I had some, they're just so sweet and thoughtful. Not that y'all men are not as they get older. But I'm just saying when you in college and it's that young love or that young desire, something it, it, that hits different. That hits very, very different. Cam, baby. <laughs> when Cam bust out in song, I got my entire life. Because not only is he fine and he can sing, which that is a that is a plus plus in my book. It was just the fact that it was just so damn random. Like it was so random. And it made me think about my friend who was pledging. She didn't know nah, she didn't. She didn't I don't think she got to the pledge part. Whatever that and that initial party is. Baby. And my friend could sing. And she was like the jukebox. So they would call her, like, I'm in the mood for some brandy. Saying some brandy. And she would just be singing. And I'd be looking at her like, what the hell? We just got back from church. We had Sunday dinner. Um, excuse me. I don't want to hear no, um, I want to be down right now, even though I'm the biggest Brandy fan in the world. Okay. I don't want to hear no, what I want to be down. I don't want to hear no, um, broken hearted and have you ever, we just got home from church. We trying to eat, 
But it made me th- it made me think about my experience when it came to that, and it was hilarious. Now, one thing I did not like, but like I said, it was very uh, authentic. How they how the dude was calling Cam aneurysm boy. I was like, oh no no, we're not speaking that over his life. We're not speaking that over his life. He will be healed. Okay, uh, I'm gonna need you to stop calling him that. Thank you. So I really did. <laughs> I really did love the fact that Jr came in and did what the hell he was supposed to do in that situation. Like I know we have rules and regulations and things that are going to happen, but we can definitely change our approach to how we do things in this um, fraternity. And I really, I, I like that because when he put that food, when Kim handed old boy his food and he dropped it and stepped on it and told them to eat it. Oh, hell no. Hell no. I said, Oh my God. Mm-mm. That's why I that's why I said I'm not cut for that. I am not cut for that in the least bit. So we're gonna get to Thea. Po baby. Thea was still struggling with this serve, baby. She could throw that ball in the air, but that other arm would not come around and swat that ball. She was just stuck. No matter how many times she threw that ball up in the air, baby, it dropped because that that uh that bracket wasn't hitting Jack. I said, Lord. Help this child. Help this poor child who just wants to play tennis. You know, so I one thing I really do love about All American Homecoming is the fact that it is a HBCU and therapy is a is a conversation that is prevalent on this show. Because I think that sometimes and even dealing with a character like Thea, Thea is not my favorite character on this show, but the one thing I do love about her character is that she's very com she's complex. She has layers to her character that I do like. And and I know people like her where your whole life you have been groomed to be a certain thing or to do a certain thing. And then when you are around different people and you begin to experience different things, it kind of it shatters your world a little bit. It rattles you a little bit because what you thought you always wanted or how you were supposed to feel. Now you're feeling something different and you don't always know how to navigate that space so that's one thing I really do love about the character of Thea even though I'm like why are you coming for coach Marcus baby he's just trying to help you okay calm your attitude but she did <laughs> you know coach Marcus had someone come out that Thea looked up to and admired and she was giving some some pointers as to how she could come out of this funk and we saw by the end of the show you know she was able to get her stride back and I was actually really happy for her because I know what it's like when you want to be great at something so much and something comes and knock the wind out of you and you just feel defeated. So I was glad that we were able to see her be victorious in this situation. Even the scene with Simone and, um, and Nate, when Nate caught Simone posting the stuff for Nico, I was like, Oh my God. Oh Lord. And then I thought it was a very interesting conversation because you know, when you have friends who are pledging, and you've been friends with them and you don't know how it's going to affect your relationship or how it's going to shift it or if it's going to be the same. Like those are actual questions that you have. You really do wonder like, you know, if I have something going on and you got something with your organization or where you going to go, you know, who's going to get your time. And I think those are valid questions and also having friends that can be understanding of what you're doing. So I really do like that. And I'm glad that um, Nate and Simone didn't have like, no animosity, no ill will. They were able to clear it right on up, you know what I'm saying, and, and get to going out, and I really enjoyed that aspect. Going to Amara when she had the pancakes with the president, I thought that was a good move, and I think it is important, especially when you're at an HBCU, that your students feel close enough to you that if something is going on, that they would knock on your door and tell you about, hey, this was going on in my life. And I do need assistance or I need direction on how I can navigate through this particular time. Because sometimes the student body feels very disconnected from the president. You know your president exists because you may see them doing homecoming. You know what I'm saying? Or you may see them when it's time to give a special um, speech or something like that or an announcement. But to have an avenue where you feel close enough to them, like where they're in arms reach for you. That doesn't happen a lot, even at HBCUs. So I'm glad that that is something that is being, that is being shown in this particular, um, uh, on this particular show. And that's what I really do love about all American is that it's such, it's so home. Like for me, when I'm watching it, it feels like home. It feels like I'm living my college experience at HBCU all over again. 
And so going to the baseball team, this is what I thought was like a major thing as well that the HBCU baseball team or Brinkson baseball team was ranked. I believe there was ranked number 24 on the top 25 list of colleges. And that is amazing because very, it's very rare that you see a HBCU baseball team ranking in the top 25. So that was a huge thing. And then we started seeing them get sponsorships. And I said, what? I like that. I, I love it. Listen, I said this last week, for though I'm probably going to say it every episode. I went to Florida a and University, and when I tell you I rocks hard for my school, even to this day, I wear my shirt, my hat, everything. I'm a rattler to the day I die will forever bleed orange or green. Very proud of it. And if you went to HBCU, put your stuff in there. I mean, if you went to a PWI, you could put down there, too. I'm not going to hold that against you. But um, I, I enjoyed my, my time at HBCU, and – Coach Marcus just really like Corey Hardrick. I've always found him to be fine, right? But him in this role is so special to me. Like he's already a father, so he does have that instinct, that paternal instinct. But it's like I love the way he kind of fathers his team without really overly fathering them. It's a beautiful thing. The balance, these right I need to find out who right. I need to find out who right on this show because they are just doing an impeccable job. And I am honestly so proud of them because this is such a beautiful depiction of positive black men to positive young black men. And being that that father figure that a lot of them probably don't have or they don't even really speak of. So it's just it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. This was a, an amazing episode. I loved it from beginning to end. I love all the nuances in it. I loved it everything about it you know I it, it was just beautiful I, I loved it um yeah that's all I got I want to thank you guys for listening I want to thank you guys for commenting if I missed anything that was of you know importance put it down in the comment section if I did miss it I just tried to hit on everything that I remember because I really just spoke from my heart and spoke from my dome because I ain't got no notes but um I really enjoyed the show and I, I hope that it gets renewed for season three because it is so deserving of it. Until next time, I will holler at y'all later. Until until next time, y'all be safe out there. One.